Yeah, going well, man. Going well. A little yeah. tired from the last few days, but uh, going well. Yeah, you've had a, a pretty uh, busy and uh, big sort of uh, week, I guess, you know, obviously supporting KISS. So what was that like? Yeah, <laughs> it was just honestly, man, like without sounding like cheesy, like it was like a dream that I didn't even know I could have, but it came true. Yeah. Really. So, yeah, it was just playing Rod Laver was just something else as well, man. Just huge check, check off the list um, that, again, I didn't even know that could, was a possibility, really. Um, but I just sort of breathed it all in, man. It was just, it was awesome. I mean, that's uh, that's really the pinnacle of what being in a band is all about, isn't it? Playing in front of crowds like that. I mean, that's got to be a, an awesome feeling to have. Yeah, man. It was just, I just, I don't know, with me, it's like, um, I, I really get a kick out. I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's a small room or a big room. I just, I just love it being on the being on the stage. This was quite cool though because all the walls were lined with people. You know, you had people up the left, the right, the back, and they were yeah. all looking down at me. So yeah, yeah it was good. <laughs> uh, did you get a chance um, to uh, maybe hang out or talk to any of the guys and kiss at all? Or yeah, so I had sort of like interactions with all of them. Um, I I was. I sort of got like a fist bump from Gene after the sound check. And then I uh, I said to Paul, as he walked past in the hallway, I said, it sounded great. And he just went, woo, <laughs> just <laughs> did a dead, you know, just a typical Paul Stanley sort of sound and yeah. he just wooed and went past. But I actually had a little bit of a chat with Tommy Thayer at the very end of the night. He was right outside our, our dressing room or our, our, our band room there. And um, they were doing uh, some signings and some... Um, uh, probably catering stuff while we were on stage. And he was, he said, oh, I'm bummed I didn't get to see you because all the sound guys were telling, this is his words, he goes, all the sound guys were telling us how good you were. Um, and uh, he said, but uh, he said, we did have a listen to you on the bus though. So that was pretty cool. Oh, cool. Nice. <laughs> he seemed really nice. He seemed really, really just relaxed. Happy yeah. to be there. Yeah. yeah, cool. Um, obviously, you know, on top of all that stuff, obviously a new album, Shockwave. Um, yeah. Now, I forgive me for not knowing exactly what's going on, but I'm kind of confused with the uh, the release date. So, is it out, or yeah. is it still coming out? Or no? So, unfortunately, what happened was um, a couple of weeks before it was due to come out, there was a, a delay on the uh, the production. So, as as many people know, vinyl was just inundated with orders and, and pushed months and months back. Yeah. And then that, that carried over into CDs. So it's pushed back till September 16. So that's okay. only a couple of weeks away, but yeah. Um, yeah, so not out just yet. Okay. All right. Um, well, I've managed to couple of, I hear a couple of songs, obviously the singles and stuff and uh, sounding good as always, but obviously you being uh, the newest member of the band, um, how did the feel to kind of work with these guys uh, in a sort of, um, you know, a creative sort of aspect? It was, it's really, I mean, they've given me everything that I need to sort of bring everything that I can to the table. There's, you know, there's no egos. It's just every idea is a valid idea. Mm. Um, and, and in terms of, uh, you know, um, me bringing my own stuff to the table, they were happy to experiment, try some new things and, and see where it took us. So it was a really good experience overall. Oh, cool. Very uh, and easy. Yeah. It's sort of an interesting story how you joined the band as well. For tell for, for some of the, the people who are going to be checking this interview out, how did the whole thing sort of start with you in, the, in Dead City Ruins? So it's funny. I, I was in bands, you know, in my early, like late, late teens, early 20s. And then I sort of stopped because I couldn't find anybody that was like really serious about it. And, mm. and uh, no one really... Um, was into it so I started making I, I just started teaching myself how to record music and, and just doing my own thing um and then I started making um you know a bunch of YouTube videos doing imp vocal impressions and stuff like that yeah. um and actually it's funny I met Blanche um at somewhere at a, a friend's album launch he came up to me and he's like oh I've, I've we've got a mutual friend and uh and he sent me a video and it's really good and this you know nice to meet you all that and the other and uh, that mutual friend, I happened to work with that guy. And uh, one day I said to him, man, I think it's, I think it's uh, time. I think I need to uh, start a band again. And a week later he came to me and he said, I've got an opportunity for you. And he said, you remember that guy from a couple of years ago? I said, yeah, he goes, well, they're looking for a singer. So it all sort of came about that way. They had seen what I put out there on the internet. And we had that mutual friend that just happened to be clued in. Yeah. And Two, two or three months later, I was on tour in Europe. So. <laughs> I mean, you just never know. 
you just never yeah. know how these things will happen you know it's, it's sort of weird how you know things sort of align in the right way it's it's really cool that's it man and like you know if it, what it's just that one little contact and just because i he knew um when it came up blanche had asked him i was like oh you remember that guy do you reckon he'd be interested and i had said many times i'm not interested in being in a band because like, i couldn't find people mm. and then just that one day just that one day we were just standing around i was like i think i'm gonna do it man I think I need to. I think I need to finally channel some of this extra energy into something and give it a good crack again. And, and then a week later, he, he had the opportunity for me. So yeah, and there you go. Crazy. Had it I is. not said anything, he he might not have even recommended it. Or, <laughs> or, or, or do it. So you know. But it seems to have been working out pretty well. But uh, how, how familiar, like you mentioned about you know going on to a European tour, how familiar were, were you with uh, the the band's catalog? I hadn't really heard them. I, I'd heard the name and and. To be honest, like I was, you know, I'm more, at least back then, what I thought, of, what I thought I wanted to write was uh, more heavy metal in the, you know, and then the Judas Priest style of, of uh, things. Um, and, uh, and also have a, you know, a love, <clears throat> part of me, a love for punk rock as well. Uh, I grew up on that as, as a young, early teen and, and uh, uh, I hadn't heard their catalog or anything. I went, I, and what sold me on it was I went to a couple of their live shows and I just fell in love with it. It was just, it was awesome. So yeah. it was the live show that made me want to join and and learning their back catalog from there was easy after that point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like we said before, that's exactly what a band is all about, isn't it? It's like the live show, you know, yeah. the, the playing in front of a crowd and stuff. Um, yeah. But what was that like sort of stepping on the stage for the first time with, with the guys? It was, I guess, because I didn't really the bands I'd been in prior, I mean, I'd done singing and, 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 you know, been a, a front man throughout my teen years front, you know, front person or a singer, but yeah. nothing quite to this caliber. So I was still trying to find myself, my voice and, and how, you know, my own stage presence, my, my, you know, what, what is it that I bring, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so stepping out the first day, I remember the first time we ever played a gig, we just went under a, um, a made up name. Okay. Um, and we just did like a, a practice gig and it felt pretty good. I definitely, I definitely uh, had an idea of what I wanted to do, but now I really feel like I know who I am and what I bring. Yeah. And my confidence is just so much, so much, it's grown so much since then. So it was, it was quite nerve wracking to do it the first time because I really didn't know what piece of the puzzle I was. Yeah. So what's, what's yeah. the biggest thing that you've uh, actually learned since being uh, in the band then? I think hmm, that's a broad one, but the biggest thing I think I've learned is how to react to a crowd. And I'm still learning that. I mean, I mean, every crowd's different, all sorts of, you get all sorts of different responses and all sorts of different things. But I've learned that as long as I go hard and as long as I encourage a good time, then a good time will be had. It's not a matter of, this is to me, and my, it would have varied to different people. Mm. It's not a matter of this crowd isn't on tonight, the gig shit. It's a matter of, okay, how do I get this crowd on? And yeah. so I, I've learned to, to, to adapt my thinking that way in that every night can be turned into a good night once you get your groove. Yeah, right. And obviously, uh, that's that can be sort of uh, different with a, a smaller crowd in you know, a local shows and stuff. Uh, but I mean, I imagine that would be completely different playing in front of a Kiss crowd as well. Oh man, I got to tell you, that crowd was absolutely electric. Like they they were just they were. We went out. It was it was a little touch and go because they didn't know what to expect. That they see Dead City Ruins and they're like, okay, what does this band sound like? Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know we've got the clips the video and everything and just as soon as we go out there and just we within about 10 seconds we just switch it on and it's just from there man they were they were just hungry for the whole thing so we were, we feel we feel lucky that we got a great crowd but everyone all the reviews tell us that we really did a lot of the warming up for that so yeah i mean that's uh yeah I, 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 that's must be one of the toughest things being in a band trying to establish yourself in front of a, a bigger crowd and playing in front of a crowd like a kiss crowd where the fan base is you know it's purely there for one particular thing and they're obviously yeah. a loyal hardcore sort of fan base and trying to impress them i mean that must be a very very difficult thing but like you said it seemed to have worked out pretty well 
Yeah, well, I think um, I think there are a couple of uh, sort of variables that sort of played out in our favour, uh, and and you know, of course, we had to put in the work <clears throat> to try and make it what what we did. Um, but you know, it was a Saturday night. It was the first gig of three, the first time Kiss had been in Australia for a few years, um, and and while it wasn't the fullest room, even the the Kiss gig wasn't entirely full. Um, everyone there was hungry for something. And so we just, we just fed them, you know, like that's the best way I can put it. We, yeah. we tapped into that. We knew, we knew once we got out there and they, they turned on, we we're like, all right, this is how we're going to do this. And that's what we did. So, yeah. I mean, despite being obviously the newest <laughs> member of the band, you, do you feel like being a front man is really that the job is to sort of like get the crowd going kind of thing, instead of like the guys are a bit more established in the band? Yeah, I mean, to a degree as well. <clears throat> um, pardon me, sorry. Um, I think it, it, it's an important job of, of a front person to really feel the room and navigate the gig that way yeah. um, uh, and sort of read what's going on. Like I said, respond and react because every crowd sort of puts out something different. Yeah. And um, I, I do believe that, but I also believe that it is the duty, or not the duty, but sort of... Um, what the band does as a whole, we all need to glue together and interact mm. quite well. Yeah. Because if if two out of five of us or one out of five of us isn't quite on the same wavelength, um, once we get ourselves back into gear, that's when starts stuff start magic starts to happen. So yeah, yeah. I think as um, I think as a front person navigating that as well as bouncing the room and, and letting those band members come forth and do what they need to do to get the room as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, uh, speaking of frontman, then who, uh, do you consider to be some of your biggest influences as far as, um, uh, vocalists and stuff? So there's probably like four main hitters that, cause I, I mean, I've thought about this a lot and, and, you know, people give me feedback and things and the, Hey, you remind me of, you know, mm. um, but two of the, probably two of the big ones would be Chris Cornell and Ronnie James Dio. It's so funny you mentioned yeah. Chris Cornell because I was listening to the singles today and I was thinking about Chris Cornell. Like your voice does have a little bit of that th sort of sound. So, yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, that's, you know, in, so what, I, what I've sort of learned over the years by doing, you know, different vocal impersonations and I sort of taught myself to sing by copying other people and mm -hmm. trying to mimic, mimic the sounds they were making. And so um, each one of those, so... Chris Cornell, Ronnie James Dio, uh, Rob Halford, yeah. um, and Sebastian Bach would be uh, okay. another one. They're, they're probably the top four that truly influenced my delivery, um, what I might do, different inflictions here and there, uh, different levels of power, uh, and how I want the overall sound and, and feel to come across. Yeah, they're very yeah, different mate. singers, obviously. So obviously you've yeah. taken sort of like bits and pieces of what they do and sort of incorporated into your own sort of uh, sort of style. That's it. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, But I'm glad that some of that's come across because, um, you know, while, while I want to sound like myself and find my own true voice, there sure. are elements of these people that have shaped the, the decisions that I've made to, to get that voice. Yeah, and obviously the band obviously picked you for a reason. So um, how did you actually approach sort of the vocal deliveries for, for the new songs? I mean, were you sort of conscious of the fact that the Dead City Ruins does have a certain sound that kind of uh, is their own, I guess? Or Yeah, definitely. And and I sort of had to – the boys were like, have you got anything? And I had some demos that I had written, and they're a definitely probably more heavy metal or power metal sounding, sounding things. Um, and – you know, hard rock is a different beast mm. um, to, to a certain degree. And, but to, to be honest, what I found is actually quite freeing because all of a sudden I didn't have to think about singing in any particular way. I could just let it come to me. Yeah. And yeah. so, so coming into their existing catalog, um, I sort of found ways that I could deliver a similar experience that to what they've heard with, mm. with the previous singer but also bring my own flair to it as well. Okay. Um, yeah. So what next for, for the band then? Uh, obviously take, coming off uh, a big high with Kiss, um, what's uh, next after the album release? So we're going to do a couple of or a few shows uh, for the album tour. It's like an album release tour. Yeah. Uh, probably. So we're going to start down in Melbourne and then most likely head up the East Coast. 
dates and official the amount of shows are yet to be confirmed. Yeah. Uh, but that's the next on the cards will be an album launch tour. Yeah. Okay. And uh, obviously maybe international touring after that at some point, maybe next year or something, or I, I'd say next year that that's most likely when that will happen. We've, we've sort of written off the rest of this year at this stage. And, yeah. and the reasoning for that is everything that's happening now was meant to happen a couple of years ago. So sure. it's very hard to find any existing slots. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, obviously it's been a tough couple of years for, for bands, especially in a place like Melbourne, you know, where they kind of got hit the hardest, you know? So I think uh, everyone's kind of busting yeah. out to try and get out and hit the road again, you know? That's it. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, that's why I think we're trying to get this album out as soon as we can so that it sinks in a little bit. Yeah. People can see what we can bring and they go, hell yeah, let's get these guys, you know? So. Yeah, definitely. Well, look, congratulations on everything. It seems like everything is going super, super well for you guys. And uh, obviously you know, well, thanks, a big welcome to uh, you and the band as well. So uh, thanks for your time, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks very much. We're really keen to get it out there and into people's ears and uh, see what they have to say. Awesome. So the release date again is September 16, yeah? September 16. Um, and you can get it either online or it'll be on the shelf at JB Hi-Fi as well. Um, so plenty of places for, for people to pick it up. Um, and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to getting it out there.